tell the... The following program, Normal Show Live, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think we need to rethink and recriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... We love the earth. Normal Show Live! Marijuana Nation! Now, here's your host... Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good afternoon, Tokers and Tokats, and welcome. It is Friday, September 16th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for joining us for today's show, a very special show. I am back from the wilds of Eastern Oregon, the 45th Parallel Club out there, the Patient Co-op, and a town hall meeting, and we're going to be discussing a lot about that today with our special in-studio guest, federal medical marijuana patient, LV Musica is here, as well as Mike Mullins and Jennifer Valley from Stony Girl Gardens. We'll talk to them at the bottom of the hour, but for now, let's introduce the studio we've got, of course, in the Pirate's Cove, Ganja John. What's up, Russ? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, although I feel a lot safer on this side of the Cascades than the other side. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. we got all sorts of stories to get to you today. Cannabis Carrie can't join us today. She is uh, helping Wiz Coleco, who is uh, broken down on the side of the road yeah, <laughs> in Washington County. Not <laughs> Not a good place to be broken down either. So uh, we're going to be handling everything ourselves today. So for our news today, we're going to begin a little bit differently with some video from right here in Portland, Oregon. K2 reporter Anna Canzano, the uh, medical marijuana hating sheriff's best friend, is out with another hit piece on medical marijuana. We'll show you the video and then I'll give you the deconstruction, a little bit of bonus radical rant right here at the top of the hour. And if we have some time, we'll fit some more stories in here. David Sirota has an excellent uh, commentary on college binge drinking versus marijuana use. The ACLU is endorsing regulate like marijuana like alcohol in the state of Colorado. There's a medical marijuana company that's getting out of Michigan after this appeals court ruling. And a surprise, a deputy in Illinois stole thousands of dollars and lots of pot from the evidence locker and sold it. <gasps> Can you believe that? Herb Thrash will be joining us at 20 after the hour for our daily toker tunes. Today is Rockin' Friday, and he's got another great rock group, Melodramas, joining us with Generation Same. At half past, we got Steve Bloom from Celeb Stoner. Com. He's going to give us the latest celebrity entertainment news, including a look at that Sarah Palin uh, biography coming out. Apparently, Sarah Palin not only inhaled, but sniffed a little too. We'll talk about that and more with Steve Bloom at half past the hour right there in New York City. And then, like I mentioned earlier at the end of the show and on into hour two, we've got live LV Musica here in studio along with Jennifer Valley and Mike Mullins from the Stony Girl Gardens. We were all just out there in Ontario for the town hall meeting. Plus, the manager of the 45th Parallel Clinic, Joey Neves, is going to call in on the Skype and tell us about how the cops are harassing not just state medical marijuana patients, but one of our few four federal medical marijuana patients right here in the state of Oregon. We won't stand for it. We're going to bring the heat and light on this. Sam Chapman from SSDP here is, is here as well. The news is coming up right after this. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, 
I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. You're listening to one hour of random daily toker tunes, the best of Roots Monday, Electric Tuesday, Irie Wednesday, Groovin' Thursday, and a double dose of Rockin' Friday. Our show replay begins at the top of the hour. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. Cannabis Carry can't be with us today. I'm Radical Russ with your Normal News. Uh, we begin today with a video report from my local, uh, I believe it's ABC affiliate, K2. In her latest report on medical marijuana in Portland, Oregon, entitled Sheriff's Association Medical Marijuana Program Out of Control, local K2 reporter Anna Canzano, formerly known as Anna Song, once again distorts and selectively edits her story to favor the anti-medical marijuana views of law enforcement. We're going to put this video up for you, play you that, and then we'll come back and uh, break it down for you. Anna Canzano, the rate we're going, we're going to believe Oregon is out three times. Now to our top story. And I don't like to go and riff on people per se, but yes, I think that it has become a problem. Oregon's medical marijuana program under fire for those just using it as a way to smoke and sell pot legally. New president, in fact, of the State Sheriff's Association calls it blatant abuse, saying Oregon's medical marijuana program is way out of control. He tells our On Your Side investigator, Anna Canzano, at the rate we're going, we're going to believe Oregon is out three times sicker than California. And Anna, more than 90% of these cardholders say they're using it to treat pain. Not glaucoma or cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was initially marketed. Even the biggest supporters of medical marijuana say the program operates in this big gray area, with some pushing the envelope too far. This is called a skillet. For Angela Fairless, this is a way of life. She's a medical marijuana patient. She showed us her card. Angela uses it to treat her migraines and post-traumatic stress disorder. She says she gets the politics of pot, that it's a complicated matter. She even gets, to some extent, why law enforcement, like the president of the Sheriff's Association, Tom Bergen, is calling out the legality of some dispensary-type stores. I admire what they are doing, the spirit behind what they're doing. The intelligence and, and morality is greatly lacking. And that I have concern about, and I have a strong moral obligation to talk about it. Dispensaries were rejected last November by Oregon voters, but overall the popularity of the state's medical marijuana program is skyrocketing. And this is a program that's definitely evolved over the years. It was initially billed to apply to just 500 people. That was an estimation. It's now ballooned to more than 50,000. 
Just last year, I went undercover to show how easy it is to get one. I hit up this clinic, paid my $200, and explained the massage therapy I get for my back and neck pain just wasn't cutting it. I walked out with a prescription for medical marijuana and even a free sample from a grower who happened to be in the clinic. Madeline Martinez happened to become Oregon's 500th patient. She's now the executive director for one of the organizations trying to legalize marijuana. But just like with prescription drugs, she says, abuse and profiteering exists. People getting the cards just to smoke and sell pot. It's why she'd be open to talking with law enforcement about better defining the rules. Darkening the gray areas is what I'd like to call it. I'd like to sit down and have a rational discussion with Tom Bergen and with all the uh, sheriff's associations. We can't even get in the door. One of the key issues I'm hearing about from both sides really is growers growing much more pot than they're supposed to for their patients and then turning around and selling that on the black market. Right now they're only supposed to have a maximum of 98 plants or less, but no one's really tracking how much of that marijuana they're actually giving to the patients and what happens to the extra pot that they grow. You can understand people raising questions with 50,000 folks using medical marijuana, 20,000 now pending on this deal. Yep. We'll follow it. Thank you, Anna. Well, we're going to follow up here at Normal Show Live because I'm going to tear these things apart. First of all, she opens up by saying Tom Bergen, the Oregon Sheriff's Association president, said at the rate Oregon is going, he believes Oregon is three times sicker than California because more than 90% of cardholders say they're using pot to treat pain, not glaucoma or cancer, as the bill was initially marketed. Well, here's the facts from the state's medical marijuana registry. There are 49,220 medical marijuana patients. There's 44,756 patients who indicate chronic pain as a quality qualifying condition. So Canzano and Bergen and every prohibitionist who scoffs at people in pain using a non-toxic herb to treat it, they whip out their calculators and they go, oh my God, 90% of the cardholders are using it for pain, not glaucoma or cancer. And actually the number is 90.9%. But what Canzano distorts is in the word not. Under Oregon law, a registry cardholder can qualify under more than one condition. The state even has a quote that says, a patient may have more than one diagnosed qualifying condition right there on the website where you got those numbers to crunch. So are we to believe people suffering with cancer and glaucoma don't suffer chronic pain as well? I just spoke at a meeting in Eastern Oregon where one young mother discussed the excruciating pain that she suffered battling multiple sclerosis. Another young lady described the torment that accompanies vomiting up tumors as she fought cancer. And I'm sitting here with a woman who's given 300 joints a month since 1988 by the federal government for glaucoma who described the lifelong pain that condition and multiple eye surgeries caused for her. Now look, if you total up the number of conditions that Oregonians are treating with cannabis, that's 69,033 among 49,220 patients. So obviously, there are 19,813 more conditions than patients. The fewest mathematically possible single condition patients in the program then is 29,407. But that's assuming that the rest of the patients only indicate two conditions. Someone with, say, HIV AIDS could also experience nausea, cachexia, and pain. So it's really hard to estimate how many cards are just for pain only, but I can tell you, mathematically speaking, that 64% of the conditions treated by cannabis and the greatest possible number of pain-only cards possible is 24,943, or a bit more than half of all cardholders. Now, Canzano emphasized also that talking point about mar- uh, law enforcement, you know, the one they use where they say, well, medical marijuana was only initi- uh, only marketed for cancer and glaucoma, right? They say, you know, it was uh, once billed as something that would apply to 500 people, but now it's ballooned to more than 50,000. Look, this is something I have debunked before when Canzano's rival in yellow journalism, Hannah Hoffman, down there at the McMinnville News Register, brought it up earlier this year. This 500 patients a year figure was an estimate of the financial impact by the Secretary of State's office. Not anything that, prop- that was proposed by the proponents of Measure 67. And I got a link on my blog. You can go read the ballot arguments yourself. None of us said it would only be 500 patients. Now, what's ironic is Hoffman, in her story, even quotes the measure's co-chief petitioner, paraplegic Stormy Ray, as saying, quote, there are thousands of patients like me right there in the ballot argument. 
Now, as for Kenzano's parroting of Bergen's, well, Oregon is three times sicker line, gee, one would have to assume if Oregon has 50,000 patients, then California must only have 16,666, right? You know, if we're three times sicker. What he did is he took the number of registered Oregon patients versus the number of registered California patients, but doesn't tell you California doesn't have a registry, really. They have a voluntary system that's kind of county by county, and people can be patients with just a doctor's recommendation. California Normal estimates that there are 750,000 to 1.25 million patients in the state of California. Based on those numbers, Oregon's population is about 1.2% patients. California's is 2 to 3% patients. Uh, Colorado's registry is 2.5% of their population. Montana's registry was 3% of their population. If anything, Oregon has fewer medical marijuana patients than other states because we don't have a safe system of, a of access for these patients. Now, you also saw in that uh, piece there where she talked about going undercover earlier this year to get her medical marijuana card. Yeah, basically, I debunked that as well, and you can go back to stash.normal.org and look up the archives on that. What she did is she went into a doctor with valid medical records, three chart notes over the past three years documenting lifelong scoliosis and the effects of three back injuries from uh, car wrecks. In other words, she uh, legally was able to get a card. Whoa, surprise. Uh, <laughs> what's, in other words, too, the only person lying in this situation was her lying about whether or not her massage therapy would help out. And that's not even a part of the law. The law doesn't say that you can only use medical marijuana as a last resort. And in fact, considering some of the toxic addictive opioid painkillers we're shoving down people's throat, it ought to be the medicine of first resort for these people. The problem law enforcement has with this rapid rise in medical marijuana's popularity, something that Kanzano helps to characterize as abuse with this one-sided hit piece, is that so many people are tired of addictive pharmaceuticals with toxic side effects, and they're choosing to go the natural route and medicate legally with cannabis. They mock people with serious pain for choosing cannabis as a first resort instead of Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, Dilaudid, or even acetaminophen and aspirin. And check my blog. You get a great, great list of side effects from drugs.com on those things. As if they're merely faking and you know, defrauding the medical marijuana program. A survey by the Arthritis Foundation found that 42% of adults suffer some kind of pain daily and 89% suffer pain monthly with a mean prevalence of chronic pain at 35.5% of the adult population. One out of three of us are suffering from pain. The real problem for law enforcement is that more legal patients makes it more difficult for the cops to figure out which one of those cannabis consumers is healthy enough to arrest, fine, and imprison, to seize the assets and driver's licenses from, to break down their doors and kill their dogs, ruin their scholarship and job search prospects, and otherwise scare the hell out of. And bless that grower who gave the free medicine to Kanzano, because we live in a state that recognizes marijuana as medicine, but refuses to provide a legal way to purchase it. So a person in pain like Kanzano is left at the mercy of drug dealers. There's no Walgreens for medical marijuana patients. And when we tried through the initiative system multiple times to institute a well-regulated system, voters rejected the proposal because of, well, fears of drug dealers. Odd then that we'd want to provide them 50,000 legal customers who can legally uh, possess their product instead of putting those customers under a regulated protective watch of a legal store. And also, I'm not too concerned about this people giving free marijuana. I've worked in so many workplaces where the guy who's got a prescription for pain pills is handing them out to his friend because his friend complains of a backache. So it's really not that big of a moral problem. And finally, to wrap this up, two of the activists that I know personally interviewed in that piece, An Angela Fairless and Madeline Martinez, I am certain they were selectively edited in here to make it seem as if the biggest supporters of medical marijuana said the program operates in a gray area, pushing too far. Yes, there's some people taking advantage of patients, and they couldn't do it as easily if there was a regulated distribution system. Kanzano's editing makes it seem as if activists feel, like the sheriffs, that the medical marijuana program is out of control when the solutions they're proposing aren't to tighten restrictions on medical marijuana, like the sheriffs would say, but instead to set up a dispensary system like I know Fairless would like to, or to outright legalize cannabis for everyone like I know Martinez would want to. In other words, Kenzano reports that both sides think medical marijuana operates in a gray area, but fails to mention that the cops want sick and disabled part patients to go back to the black market, and activists just want to make it a legal market. 
And that's my radical rant for today. You can check out more about this on my blog at stash.normal.org. It's right up there with uh, Kate, uh, Portland reporter Anna Canzano, a medical marijuana hating sheriff's best friend. We've got a link to the video, also links to the previous uh, special report she hit piece she did on medical marijuana, links to all those side effects of the drugs, the studies, everything you want to know about this piece. It's up there. Please tweet it out there. Facebook it. Get it out to more people because we have to call out these reporters. They're selectively editing and distorting this message. What do you think about a break? Bruce? I think somebody desperately needs a break and he's going to take it. We'll be right back with Herb Thrasher on the line and Rockin' Friday. It's 20 after the hour and we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? Repo man. Have you ever met that funny repo man? Repo man. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that repo man. Times Medical Cannabis Cup is coming to Detroit on October 15th and 16th. That's right. The world's premier medical marijuana competition will be in Motown to celebrate the cannabis economy of the Great Lakes State. It's a two-day expo at Burt's Warehouse Theater, showcasing the movers and shakers of the Michigan medical marijuana industry and the merchandise that makes the machine go. There will be seminars with leaders of the medical marijuana movement, doctors, patients, researchers, growers, dispensary owners, and activists. Plus, High Times' own cultivation editors Danny Danko and Nico Escondido will roll into town with the goods on growing great ganja. Be there for an amazing Saturday night VIP party featuring top musical performances and special guests. High Times will award the Medical Cannabis Cup for top indicas, sativas, hybrids, concentrates, and edibles entered by Michigan's dispensaries and collectives. Come to Burt's Warehouse Theater on October 15th and 16th. Visit MedCanCup.com for all the details. Celebrate cannabis in Michigan. Celebrate the resurgence of Detroit. Be part of the growing cannabis community. Georgia. Hi, this is Willie Nelson, and I need your help. Alcohol prohibition didn't work in the 20s, and marijuana prohibition isn't working today. It's time we stop arresting law-abiding citizens because they prefer marijuana over alcohol. Nearly 2,000 Americans are arrested every day on marijuana charges. We're unfairly destroying the lives and careers of hundreds of thousands of people each year simply because they smoke marijuana. These are not criminals, they're average citizens like you, good neighbors who work hard, raise families, pay taxes, and contribute to their communities. We need your help to end marijuana prohibition once and for all. It's the fair thing to do. For more information, contact Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Call toll-free 888-67-NORML or visit their website at norml.org. Normal Show Live. We're as much like Cheech and Chong as ordinary Americans are like the Three Stooges. <coughs> hey, Mo! <coughs> Here, Mo! In today's busy world, we're inundated by advertising for all types of pharmaceuticals that come with a laundry list of potential side effects. Shouldn't you have better medical choices? Natural alternatives to pills pushed by Big Pharma? At Alternative Medical Choices, you could choose natural, safe, and effective alternative therapies that are right for your budget without nasty side effects. Cannabis, or marijuana, has been a legal medicine in the Pacific Northwest since 1998. Our doctors will help determine your qualifications for a medical marijuana recommendation in Oregon, no matter where you live. Our massage therapists will ease your aches and stress with soothing hemp seed oil or cannabis-infused massage salves. We also offer acupuncture, Reiki, and other alternative health therapies. Call Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon at 503-288-5579 or visit our website at www.altmedchoices.com. We specialize in out-of-state recommendations. That's www.altmedchoices.com or call 503-288-5579. It's time for your Daily Toker Tunes, the best in 420-friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. 
Today, we take you into the weekend with Rockin' Friday. Our segment features the best of rock, metal, punk, and jam band music. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tune. All right, we get back on the line here with Herb Thrasher. How you doing, Herb? Oh, uh, doing great, man. Another busy week, it sounds like, Russ. Oh, yeah, we're having a busy old time here, that's for sure. And uh, tonight, my Boise State Broncos take the field, uh, playing uh, Toledo, I believe, the Rockets. Yeah, we're hoping that's going to be a good game. Usually these games aren't, but we're yeah. hoping that Toledo's going to show up this time and kind of give you guys a good game. <laughs> well, they, uh, they, you know, you never know, man. They played Ohio State tough last week, so hopefully yeah. that's something. That's what I was saying. That's what I was thinking. All right, so uh, we got to get right to the tune here because I know it's a long tune. So tell us all about. Yeah, we've the... got a long song here. Uh, definitely a little bit longer, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit short. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more information uh, on this band on the on the website, so definitely check out the blog. But uh, we have a good band here, Melodramas. They're from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and they're just huge supporters of, uh, of of the show. They're they're huge supporters of our community, and uh, so I've, I've talked with them a time or two, and uh, told them we'd get them on the show. And so yeah, they have this great song right here, uh, Generation Same. And really, you know, it got me thinking with all this going on. It, it really is. It's just the same old, same old stuff. You know, just hearing this with Elvie now, this story. It's just the same old. It's just. It's such a tired, tired subject, and we get the same old news every week. It's just a different person involved. And so it was a perfect song to play. And, and actually, while we're on it, you guys, if, if you like the song and, and you like the band, if you guys go to uh, melodramas.bandcamp.com, they're actually pretty much giving away both of their albums. And so they, it, it's a cool way to, some bands are kind of doing it now where they either give it away or you can name your own price. Mm-hmm. And I recommend going there and downloading the album and naming 420 as your price. There you go. And so uh, if you guys want to pay, you know, $4.20 is always a good pay, and I'm sure they'll love it. So support these guys. Get out there and support Rock. Support the Cannabis Community. And uh, you guys have a good weekend. And uh, Russ will talk soon. Go Boise. Go Broncos. All right. This is Melodramas with Generation Same on your Rockin' Friday Daily Toker Tunes.
to cut your mind so you don't see the truth. Lock you up for possession and sell it to another one. One united that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker tunes from the main menu. Starfish Designs, makers of the original Gandalf. I'm Radical Russ and when I want to relax I always have my 17 inch long original Gandalf from Starfish Designs nearby. The hand blown borosilicate glass is strong and easy to clean and the design is sleek and sophisticated. Starfish designs are available from Bend, Oregon at a glass retailer near you. For locations, call 541-788-GLASS. That's 541-788-4527. Normal Show Live reminds you to never consent to a search. If you're holding and you consent, in most states you will be arrested immediately and you will go to jail. If you don't consent to a search... Police may try to intimidate you by threatening to bring in drug-sniffing dogs or try to fool you by saying things will go easier if you consent. Yeah, easier for them, sure. Stand your ground, refuse the search, and ask the officer if you're free to go. If they still detain you and eventually find your contraband, you'll be no more busted than if you had allowed the search. But by refusing the search, your attorney has a chance to win your acquittal before a judge. If you consent to the search, your attorney's hands are tied. You can find a list of normal legal committee attorneys specializing in marijuana cases by visiting the Find a Lawyer link at normal.org. Come and see the violence is held in the system! Help! Help! I'm being repressed! As High Times Senior Cultivation Editor, I'm often called into the field and asked to sample or even identify exotic strains of marijuana in their natural habitat. Now, for the first time, I've compiled more than 120 of my favorite strains into this single field guide designed to fit into your pocket as you travel the world in search of your favorite plant. From a friend's closet grow room to the wilds of Northern California, this single guide covers all of today's best known strains, plus heirlooms and throwbacks, including High Times quality photos and information on each variety's genetic heritage and growing characteristics, plus my personal notes on aroma, flavor, and potency. So this is Danny Danko, author of the official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains, wishing you good times and great ganja. The official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains is available at hightimes.com and finer bookstores. Marijuana culture is infused throughout America and the world. As we round out the week, we take a look at the 420 phenomenon in movies, TV, music, and sports with former High Times editor and author of Pot Culture, Steve Bloom, in our CelebStoner.com Entertainment News. All right, back out to New York City and Steve Bloom. How's everything going out there, my man? Everything's fine. How are you, Russ? Doing fantastic. I know you must be getting ready for the Boston Freedom Rally this weekend. Yeah, last time I, t- I spoke to you, I was heading west to Oaksterdam, and uh, this time I'm heading north to Boston, or northeast. So I'm leaving uh, tomorrow morning uh, for the rally that begins at noon. So uh, you kind of get up there and 
you know, it's uh, it's not quite as arduous as uh, Seattle three days as it's become. So it's a one day six hour event, uh, but it's really packed in and concentrated. It's you know, it's a really fun event. Uh, uh, it has uh, uh, expanded to multiple stages, uh, two stages in the last few years. So, and also the big change in Boston is the laws. Uh, sure. in, in 2009, uh, marijuana was decriminalized in Massachusetts, and before then, it was always a big issue with the police arresting a lot of people. The Boston Freedom Rally was yeah. kind of like the problems we have here in New York. Uh, at the New York events, uh, New York rallies, we've had a lot of, a lot of arrests and past, and and uh, so it was always you know big issue, and uh, and that's over now pretty much. I mean, you can get cited for smoking marijuana, but you will not be arrested. You will you will not be taken out in handcuffs and humiliated like uh, had been the case in the past. So I think it's a big change for the event. Yeah, I, I went there a couple of years ago. Great event, and it is the uh, it's the concentra- concentrated hash oil of Hemp Fest, man. It's like noon to six, man. They're up at noon. They're gone at six. It's you got to get there, and uh, if you want to experience the whole thing, and uh, definitely visit out there with Steve Bloom, who'll be uh, who'll be there among others. Uh, do you know who else is uh, going to be there among uh, the activists in the East Coast? Well, certainly a whole bunch of the normal folks are coming up. Alan St. Pierre and Keith Strop and Sabrina Fendrick are all coming up uh, from Washington, D.C. Uh, and, you know, all the people from the Mass Can organization, you know, which, you know, starts with Mike Can and, uh, uh, you know, Steve Epstein. Uh, you know, there'll be so many other, the, uh, their representatives will be speaking. Um, but, you know, there is, there is a kind of a list that's posted up at Celeb Stoner now to uh, identify um, who you can and, you know, go and, you know, watch at what time and it's the schedule. Uh, for instance, uh, Sean Ryan is speaking right after I'm speaking uh, at, you know, 2 o'clock. Uh, Sean Ryan's a candidate for Boston City Council. So uh, that's more of a local issue there. And so you'll get a lot of the local stuff. you got Danny Danko, sure. uh, the whole High Times crowd, of course. Yeah, Danny, yeah. Uh, Bobby Black, and Rick Cusick will all be up there speaking at different times. Um, and as far as the bands, you know, you have like pretty much a lot of the same that have been playing over the years, like Prospect Hill, um, DJ Slim. Uh, terminology is uh, part of it this year. He's going to be the hip hop uh, kind of big uh, hip hop act. Um, um, you know, Tree is making a comeback this year. This is actually oh. the year of the comeback of band yeah. Tree, who had played many, many years there. When the Boston Freedom Rally had this reputation of sort of being a real hard rock event, you know, it's kind yeah. of almost middle, but kind of hard, you know. And, yeah, yeah. and so Tree was one of those bands. Yeah, you know, they're kind of like radical and they're hard and uh, run by this guy, Dave Tree, who's a really cool guy, and he's been in different bands over the years and are now coming back with Tree. And, but and actually, what is most dear to my heart is the reunion of the 360s who are performing uh, as well uh, at 3 o'clock. And the 360s are a band that was on my Hempelation album, the first one, uh, oh. the Freedom is Normal album. They did the version of the David Peel song, I, Love, I Like Marijuana. Right, okay. And so the 360s were, had their kind of time in the 90s, and they performed a lot, mostly in the East Coast, but had their little run. And then they kind of like, you know, decided you know to not be a band anymore and chilled out and orgy clark is the leader of the band and uh and uh also um i got named eric russell who she lives with and has been a longtime partner and so they've sort of it was sort of defunct but then all of a sudden they hear the band is sort of making up the comeback for the rally and in addition to that david peel they have invited to perform with them a couple of songs including the marijuana song and so that's where i get recruited because I kind of brought them together initially, and then when we recorded the song, I sang on it as a backup. And then over the years, because of that, <laughs> David Peel recruits me to sing as a backup with him on such you know, the marijuana song and a few of his others wow. who I've got to know. So I'm a little bit of a backup in the low east side of David <laughs> Peel's extended mer- family band. So I will be on stage, in addition to my little slot of speaking, singing with David Peel in the 360s. Oh I my God. like marijuana. I'm one of the songs. You don't want to miss the Boston Freedom Rally for your opportunity to see Steve Bloom sing. If, if only for that. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> hey, you Steve. Gotta keep up with David Peel. He's really loud. It's yeah. tough. Hey, let's let's switch over to sports. I reported earlier this week how our uh, pigskin potheads uh, fantasy football team beat the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> they were the best team in our little fantasy league in the oh, real cool. world. I was, wondering, I was wondering how that was getting off to. Yeah, yeah, did really, really well. Uh, Vic did almost as well as Aaron Rodgers, was like uh, maybe two points behind him. Our wide receivers dominated their wide receivers. Running backs were about equal. Our tight end was much better. Uh, we lost on defense and kickers. But, you know, overall, we won the game by uh, 10 points or so. 
Hey, Ricky Williams had a good day, right? Yes, yes, he had a good day. Uh, the other Marshawn Lynch was the other back, and he didn't do so well. How about uh, Harvin? Didn't he Harvin? Didn't Harvin he did great. Day? I had Harvin on the bench in favor of. I can't remember. I had Kenny Britt up, and I forget the other receiver I had up. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, not this week though. We got that. Oh, it was a uh, Santonio. I had Santonio up uh, rather mm-hmm. than Percy Harvin. So Santonio is apparently having some uh, quadriceps problems. So I've got uh, Percy on for this next week. I think he'll. I think Centennial will play. I read yeah. that this morning, but it looks like he'll play. And we'll check that out. But it's just nice to see that you know a team full of nothing but players who've had problems with pot, drug tests, or been busted for pot, out playing the Super Bowl champs. I thought that was great. Has Maroney found a team yet? I don't think so. No. Lost Maroney. For, unfortunately, not. Hey, let's go to real world sports though, because you are always filling us in on the New York Metro or Media Softball League. Uh, what's the final result of the uh, the High Times Bong Hitter season? Well, uh, the High Times Bong Hitters lost in their efforts to dethrone Wall Street Journal for the second time in a row. Now, Wall Street Journal is now has three peated uh, as the uh, the best team in the New York Media Softball League, the NYMSL, which I'm the commissioner of. Uh, and my I was once, you know, the coach of the High Times Bong Hitters, no longer with High Times, and just run the league, which includes High Times. And, you know, sort of deep down, I was rooting. I was hoping, you know, it'd be nice to see High Times win again. They won yeah. it the first year uh, when we started in the league in, in 2007, and then Business Week won it the second, and then Wall Street Journal won the next three. Business Week dropped out of the league because they had some changes when Bloomberg bought the company. And so, you know, it's really been High Times and Wall Street being the two best teams with DC Comics as a possible third. And so as it turned out, they, they all played in the playoffs together, and uh, Wall Street just kind of came out really strong in both games. In the semifinals, they opened up with a 10-run inning against DC Comics Ooh. in the first game. I mean, they just came out so strong, and uh, they ended up winning that one 17-4. to Now, High Times played the the Newsweek uh, Daily Beast team, and they shut them out 12 to nothing. so they were destined to meet in the finals. And, you know, so here's the finals, and Wall Street Journal was up first, High Times being like the top seed because they were 9-1 and and beat Wall Street Journal twice during the regular season, you know, where it was the home team. So Wall Street Journal comes up batting first, and they did the same thing. They scored seven runs. They just batted around. And uh, and then, you know, they uh, you know scored four more in the second. It was 11-2 to two after two, and High Times just could not get anything going. Yeah. So, you know, that was it. 11-3, to three, Wall Street Journal won it again. So... Uh. There you have it. It's a little disappointing for high times, but at the same time, you know, I think they should think, you know, realize that they were 9-1, and one, they won the regular season, that's a big deal, but, yeah. you know, they didn't win the playoffs. Yeah, it can happen like that. Well, Steve, uh, we got to go. Unfortunately, we've got, uh, well, not unfortunately, we've got guests in the studio that we have to get to, but before we go, I wanted to give you a little bit of time here. What the hell is up with Sarah Palin? Well, you know, Sarah Palin is being, you know, reported uh, in a new book that's coming out by Joe McGinnis, who's been, you know, working on a book, and he's a pretty well-known, you know, reporter who's done a lot of books over the years, and he's been up in Alaska, you know, investigating into Sarah Palin's life, and he's found that, you know, there's, uh, there's drug use in her history that, you know, that's sort of admitted through sources of her doing cocaine and doing marijuana, smoking pot with a professor in school, went one of the schools that she went to doing coke with her husband on a snowboarding trip. Um, on a, It's really specifically on the top of a 55-gallon drum <laughs> turned over. <laughs> You know, like That's a Alaska. Over. So it's very specific. <laughs> and then she's got this thing where, you know, she's had this allegation of an affair with her husband's business partner, partner once upon a time business partner, um, who um, she, uh, you know, has, you know, in said it's not true before, so it's not the first time that's come up, apparently, but the thing about Glenn Rice, the NBA player, former NBA player and former University of Michigan star, you know, that they had, you know, a one-nighter. Uh, now, that's interesting, you know, not only, you know, it was even before he was even a pro, yeah. he was actually in college, so it's a long time ago. Wow. Um, so, that hasn't been disproven, so, you know, I guess there's going to be a lot of he said, she said, <laughs> or author said, and, you know, already, you know, her husband husband Todd is, you know, come down against it, you know, that it's yeah. all, you know, nonsense and, you know, don't believe what you're reading. But, you know, it's, I guess, going to be a reporter's word against, you know, the Palins wow. uh, in terms of, you know, many other things that probably will be in that book. But that's the stuff that's kind of salacious all right, well, and has come out already. We'll keep our eye on that, and I'm so sure any, we'll have Yeah, anyway, reports. tomorrow, everybody, go find me at the Green Glass Clean booth 
in the Boston Common. That's where I will be with my books and Slub Stoner stickers. Right you on. Find me there. So, <laughs> Elvy Music says hi here from the studio, by the way. Oh, I love you, Elvy. <laughs> All right. Love we, you and miss you, Elvy. <laughs> We'll have you all back. Thanks, Steve Bloom from Slipstoner.com for joining us here for the Entertainment Report. Have fun in Boston. And when we come back, we're live with LV Musica as well as Mike Mullins and Jennifer Valley from Stony Girl Gardens, Sam Chapman from SSDP, and uh, Joey Neves from the 45th Parallel Club in Ontario, Oregon on the phone. We're right back after this. Cactus. Pop. Cactus. Just say no. No matter what you call it, it's a huge part of popular culture. What'd you learn that, Cheek? Drug school. You don't need weed school. You just need a copy of the new book, Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. Hey, this is great, man. Even if you never smoke marijuana. I never use marijuana. Sorry. Don't think you smoke marijuana. I experimented with marijuana a time or two. You didn't inhale. Or you used to smoke marijuana. I inhaled uh, frequently. That was, uh, that, was, that was the point. Pot Culture by former High Times editor Steve Bloom and Shirley Halperin will answer every question you ever had about marijuana culture. Uh, has that marijuana made it back up here yet? Check out Pot Culture, the A to Z guide to stoner language and life at Amazon.com or visit PotCultureBook.com today. Too bad, man. I just stopped smoking yesterday. Want more than just your normal show life? Get your daily fix of marijuana news and interviews on the normal daily audio stash. The weekday podcast available on iTunes and at stash.normal.org. that show too because the more informed you can be about this whole movement the better because we got it takes all of us to, to, to have this knowledge to be able to use it to obtain that legalization we can get it but it takes all of us hello this is Webb Hubble life insurance is now available for responsible marijuana smokers for years responsible marijuana smokers have not been able to access affordable life insurance products. Normal uniquely supports cannabis consumers. Two carriers have already agreed to offer all of their traditional life insurance products at all levels without excluding individuals who smoke marijuana responsibly. Help Normal and help yourself. If you've been declined for life insurance, are paying above market premiums, or simply want to know what now may be available in the way of insurance for marijuana smokers, contact me at info at mclaughlinonline.com or simply call me at 202-293-5566. Legalization. Decriminalization. Lowest law enforcement priority. Medical marijuana. Ganja sacrament. Consumer cannabis. Industrial hemp. The world of marijuana law reform involves many different aspects of cannabis that interact nearly every public policy discussion in America, including health care, the economy, global climate change, law enforcement and prisons, immigration, religion, free speech, energy policy, and war. Now, we take a look at how re-legalizing marijuana will change the world in our normal show live, Cannabis Conversations. All right, welcome back, everyone. We are very, very pleased to have as a guest in our studio for the first time, LV Musica, one of the four remaining patients on the Compassionate Investigative New Drug Program, a.k.a. Federal Medical Marijuana. LV, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Russ. We're so glad to have you. And also joining us, we've got uh, Mike Mullins and Jennifer Valley from Stony Girl Gardens. How are you all doing? Thanks for having us, Ross. Glad to have you here. Sam's hanging out from uh, Oregon Ducks SSDP taking notes, so uh, he hasn't got a mic, So, but he's here as well. And uh, we've also got on the phone uh, Joey Nieves from the uh, 45th Parallel Club in Ontario, Oregon. Are you there, Joey? 
Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Russ. All right. Uh, let's start. I'm going to start off quickly with Joey to describe the situation. Then we'll go to Elvie to get her take on it. Joey, we were out there yesterday. Well, yesterday, two days ago? Thank yeah, you. Wednesday. Uh, for the 45th Parallel Town Hall meeting, uh, about 70 people showed up, and there was a lot of speakers, uh, really well run and organized, discussing medical marijuana. And when I arrived there at the Clarion Hotel, I saw a state trooper car parked out there in, in front of the Clarion watching people come in. Let me let you take it from there as far as what happened after the for the uh, town hall meeting. Well, after the town hall meeting, s several speakers had joined together at the Point of Parallel Club for an app for for just a meeting for an afterwards meeting. And on the way out, as people were leaving, a state trooper pulled them over and gave them all a hard time. And this happened repeatedly, not once, not twice, but three times. One of, one of the uh, one of the people that left was actually a grower, not a patient. And according to Oregon state law, he's laid, you know, as a card holder, he's li likely to have marijuana on him or paraphernalia, and he would not be subject to any fines or criminal penalties for this. But the state trooper that pulled him over went out of his way to give him a hard time, and gave him a citation for a thousand dollars and an appearance ticket here in Ontario. The next day, I went with the the grower to the state trooper's office explained the situation and he was not very friendly in the beginning after I, I identified myself as a former law enforcement officer army counter narcotics he got a little friendlier and then I started to ask about the videotapes from that night and how to, how to get a copy of it and then he started I started to get stonewalled he said I needed a form I said, I said okay what form do I have he says well we don't have those here I said where can I get it you'll have to investigate that yourself he tells me mm -hmm. So uh, Now, before we get today, too deep into this, uh, Joey, uh, do you have the name of the state trooper and the name of the sergeant? The state trooper who pulled him over, I do, not, I do not personally have his name in front of me. The sergeant I spoke to was Sergeant Duncan, and he seemed friendly enough in general once he found out I had all my ducks in a row and knew, who I, knew what I was doing. But in, initially, he was um, a bit concerned and hard-edged regarding the whole situation. Mm-hmm. Now we we reported, you know, I'd, I'd spoken to you earlier that, the, you know, the, he had uh, seized this pipe, and then uh, as far as Elvie's situation, didn't believe the uh, the federal medical marijuana paperwork. Elvie, can you tell us what happened as far as your encounter? Uh, it was very interesting. We were riding back to the hotel, and we got stopped, and um, somehow the issue of uh, Jennifer and I being patients came up, and you know, I had no problem. Uh, offering to educate him by showing him a, fair, a prescription, which looks like any other prescription. The only difference is that this is a prescription for marijuana, but it's uh, from the pharmacy at the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute, one of the most, the best, most renowned eye hospitals in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the prescription was not only totally legal, but I also carry a little card that says who I am and has my ID number, but in the back, it has a note from my doctor and uh <laughs> <laughs> phones it happens don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so anyway the uh the card specifically says that i that i am a member of this federal program and it has my doctor's dea license number and a seal now for some reason um officer stevens uh, has no respect for prescriptions. I asked him at the very beginning, I said to him, why are you questioning my prescription? If this were Prozac, you wouldn't have a problem with it. And he's like, oh yeah, but Prozac's not a Schedule One, and uh, this is a, against the federal cover. I said, the federal, Uncle Sam is my supplier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they came to jail then, you know, whatever. No, there was no jail involved. But he came back and returned everybody else's belongings, IDs, et cetera. So if, and they'll tell you more about what they went through. But they withheld my medicine from me, which... Thank God I'm in, in a state where patients are allowed to share their medicine. Otherwise, I would have been without medicine for the rest of that night and way into the morning. And I need to have my medicine in my system at all times. It maintains my interocular pressure under control. It has done so for 35 years and for 23 of those legally with a supply from the federal government. Absolutely. Now, uh, LV, you're telling us they, the, the trooper, and you're saying his name's Officer Stevens? Yes. Seized Officer your medicine 
medicine, didn't believe yes. your prescription. Joey, let me get you back on in, into this because you yeah. took this up with the sergeant there, the Sergeant Duncan, and, and this is where we're trying to get some clarification as to whether or not he thought that he could seize that because of federal law, or was he actually directed by federal officials to seize these things? Can you clear that up for us? From what I understand from Sergeant Duncan, he had, he had just explained to me he just came from a federal meeting of all state troopers involving narcotics officers and agents and he was assured at that point that there were no federal programs where patients got medical marijuana and when i when i got when i finally got you know spoke to him about it he was very flustered about the whole situation and he had told me that the officer that night had called him at his home in the middle of the night because this was very late and asked him if he could if he could take her into custody and he said no get her information write the citation and you know we would work on it and at that point, that's where we stopped talking about Miss Elvie and started talking about the other patient issue. Hmm. Okay. And so uh, he's he's uh, not directly saying he was instructed by federal officials to do this. That is correct. He did, however, say that the Department of Justice and the feds keep telling him that they, whatever they get from the patients in terms of medical marijuana, they are to seize and not return at any cost. Even for the federal patients like Elvie. All patients, he said. Wow. Okay. And he, and he, at that point, he still wasn't sure if LB was actually, you know, in that situation because he still didn't believe the program exists. <laughs> yeah. And how long did this all? How long did this take, LV? How long were you detained and harassed and frustrated? We here? were at the at the on the roadside for two full hours. Wow. Uh, let me bring uh, Jennifer Valley into this conversation so we can get a third uh, party perspective. You were there as well. Can you can you fill in any other details that we haven't covered? Well, they took my medication for me. I had a small bottle of concentrate, and he, he didn't know what it was, and he's very confused and concerned about it. And he came over and asked me if my doctor had told me what I was allowed to have under the medical marijuana program, and if I knew what the rules were, what I was allowed to have. And he asked me if I was even allowed to have this. And I said, yes, I'm definitely allowed to have this. Any preparation or mixture thereof. Right. And he said, no, I don't think you're allowed to have this. And I said, yes, I'm specifically under a specific clause in the law allowed to have concentrates and you need to give it back to me. Yeah. yeah. And he he said, well, I need to go back and do some more digging. And he went and and was gone for another probably half hour wow. before he finally brought my medicine back to me. But it was clear that if I hadn't known my rights and known the law really well, he would have taken advantage of me and taken my medicine and yeah. possibly put me in jail. Yeah. And, and Mike, did you want to weigh in on that? You had something? Uh, I did. I have a couple of... Uh, Go ahead, grab that mic get it close to you. Yeah, I did. First of all, uh, we had already uh, heard that the person before us that had left was pulled over, and it was by the same officer, Officer Stevens. And, in fact, he was sitting in a private home next door to the club in their driveway waiting for people to leave and would follow us. Uh, he followed us for about a three-mile period before he finally pulled us over. And uh, uh, it was for supposedly a license plate light being out, which was not out. Uh, first put me through a sobriety test, tried to, of course, get me for a Dewey, uh, which I completely passed because I was a designated driver for the ladies, which I explained to him. Um, and so I, I just, uh, I know it was a targeted issue. We did... Uh, know that he it was the same officer that pulled over the guy before us so mm. wow well this is uh you know ongoing here and we're going to keep uh joey on the line as well as uh, continue talking about this here in hour two for toker talk radio so i want to encourage everyone to stick around we've got federal medical marijuana patient lv musica here in studio as well as mike mullins and jennifer valley from stony girl gardens and uh, joey nieves from the 45th parallel uh before we wind up the podcast though joey tell us any uh contact information for people uh out there in the east that want to get in touch with 45th parallel on the web or facebook or anything well, we, do, we, are, we do have a web presence, 45thparallel.org. And for direct line is 541-889-6147. That's 541-889-6147. And we're basically taking care of people on the eastern side of Oregon and in Idaho and anywhere else that needs our, needs our help. All right. And Jennifer, the uh, website for you is stonygirlgardens.com. Is that right? Uh, we're stonygirlgardens.com and we're also growforme.com, which is 
www.gro4me.com. All right, check that out, folks, and support uh, folks uh, support these brave patients that are trying to make a difference and coming out to these town hall meetings and speaking out for our rights uh, as they are under Oregon law and fighting to make it a right for everyone. And we will continue to do that. we got to wind up the podcast. So for Ganja John, I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Take it on one more time. You take a seat, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seat, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seat, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down to Back, everyone. It's 2.01 Pacific Time. Time for Toker Talk Radio. You can toke, you can talk, you can toke or talk. We're going to toke and talk. We got all sorts of people here in the studio, and I apologize. I ran out of time, LV, before I could mention your website. You have a website as well. Oh, no, I don't even do the internet very often at all. Somebody wants to contact me, my phone number is 916 320 9052. Right I would like to talk about what happened when Let's we, do. Yeah, when we picked up the, we did go the next day to pick up my prescription. This is after I've been given a ticket so I could appear in court on October 5th. But as, uh, as he left, first I argued with him. I said, you can't take this. You're going to get all of us, including yourselves, in a lot of trouble. Uh-huh. But then I realized that, you know, where there's ignorance, there's always trouble. And I sensed that I was dealing with a lot of that. So I just left knowing that at least I wouldn't be without the medicine because there were other patients at the hotel thank God for that it's important that we have uh, connections and that's why this uh, thing of dispensaries or any way to help the patients do collectives is really important and we do need to stress it to the federal government to the Justice Department that it isn't fair to leave us out there wondering where to get things so that we're subject to all this incredible things that happen here i have a regular prescription this has not happened to me in this millennium folks this used to happen to me when i was on the road because i did the entire united states including Hawaii and hawaii and alaska by the end but i have uh i had a lot of problems uh, when i first was on the road because there was even much much more ignorance than there is now yeah people definitely we know thanks to your efforts and all of ours and we are making progress along those lines so in this millennium i have not been harassed over my prescription i have shown it to several officers whenever the occasion presented himself they usually smiled congratulated me <laughs> and you know we're really happy that someone was doing something with this many officers really want to see the laws change because it puts them in a terrible position i for one know i grew up respecting and loving law enforcement half my family the musica family is law enforcement i mean from tas in colombia to sheriffs here in the united states and all that we have respect for laws we just cannot possibly put ourselves in jeopardy trying to adhere to laws that obviously have not been studied well enough before being put on the the books to even understand what you're doing in my particular case I did go through trial and the judge made it very clear that I would have to be crazy not to have used marijuana so it's sort of a reverse insanity trial and he said that uh, the same thing that judge young told the DEA that 
patients should not be punished because this is the safest substance known to mankind and that the laws need to be changed because of the anomalies there yeah. because you are working with normal trying to make those changes and many other groups around the country as well and every one of us wants to see it now this particular morning um, another officer and I don't know if that was officer Duncan because this particular officer didn't particularly want to give me his name or if he did I didn't hear it but he was incredibly nice when he handed me my belongings back and took some pictures, as a matter of fact, of my uh, identification and also a letter from my attorney that states that I have the right to travel with cannabis. Obviously, how else am I going to medicate wherever I go, you know? Yeah. So, and it's, it's national. I mean, this is federal. So uh, he gave it to me, but he stay apologized kind of and said that the reason this was happening is because the federal... Authorities had come around instructing the sheriffs and the uh, the state officers to take to confiscate the uh, marijuana or the medicine or the utensils they used to partake with uh, from the patients and not to bother to give them back. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand, and I haven't done enough research to know this, but I think that is against o Oregon law that taxpayers have to pay uh, officers so that they can uphold federal law instead yeah. of state law. So I think there's a conflict there, but it was made very clear to me that they were kind of sorry, but this is the, this is the instructions they have been given by the federal uh, officers, which is in direct contradiction with what our president has told us, that patients should be left alone. They're not after us. They're not supposed to be harassing us. And you put us in jeopardy every time you take your medicine, not only because we're without it, but because when we're under stress, it doesn't matter what our illness is. It is under attack. Stress is the biggest killer in the United States, and there is no better stress killer than cannabis. Here, here, absolutely. We're with LV Music, a federal medical marijuana patient. Also in studio, Jennifer Valley and Mike Mullen from Stony Grove Gardens. And still on the phone line, we have uh, Joey Nieves from uh, the 45th Parallel Club in Ontario. He's uh, the clinic manager out there uh, at the location we're talking about. And we're also taking your calls here. If you want to call in and ask questions from the folks that are here, phone number is 971-533-7111. Uh, Joey, other than the uh, gentleman who got the ticket for the pipe having resin in it uh were there any other citations for people they were but they don't want to come forward with this story and they have to respect that understood understood how about anyone here jennifer did you guys get any tickets or anything nothing just the seizure and then they gave it back or did you have to go get it no they gave it back to me that night i i was so surprised uh, because i i was certain that Elvie would be getting her medicine back and that i would not and instead they gave me mine and took hers <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and we have to remember there was a, an intimidation value to this and a, a two-hour time limit of where we were uh, literally under hold. So. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the thing a lot of people uh, fail to uh, add in on these situations is, oh, well, you didn't get arrested. You got your weed back. I, everything's okay. Well, it's not. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. I was harassed. I was kept on the side of the road. My liberty was kept from me. I had a guy with a gun telling me what to do. <laughs> that's some serious stuff there. You know, I'm so glad you're bringing that up because I think one of the main reasons that I stay on the road and have always been on the road, when someone read me the Emperor Wears No Clothes and I found out why this was illegal to keep the farmer from competing in just about every area of life that is essential to us, but uh, and substituting it with 50,000 chemical products that are causing so much illness is not even... I mean, one in every three of us is expected to have cancer or is it one in every two? I yeah, forget one, now. one in every three. Uh, I, I just saw an excellent documentary last night too called uh, "Knives Over Forks." It was talking about plant-based diets and how in countries they they showed in Norway when you know Norway they ate a lot of meat and they had their cancer rates were way up there. And then when the Nazis come in to Norway during World War II, they took all the cows for the soldiers. They're going to feed the soldiers meat. Everyone in Norway had to go on a plant-based diet. Cancer rates fell. And then, when the war was over and they could have their meat back, Norway's cancer rates went right back up. So, yeah, there's a, there's so much in our natural world that we don't pay attention to as far as our health and our homeostasis in our bodies and our you know general well-being. And cannabis, of course, you're talking about plant-based diet. <laughs> Put cannabis on the top of the list. Hey, not to mention that the hemp seed oil, which is not even narcotic and is definitely legal, but there's been so much intimidation. Most people don't have the information and fear it anyway. But that's like the best food in the entire planet, uh, according to Andrew Wilde, according to Rudolf Harasma, the real authorities on food value. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's that. But uh, to continue this prohibition is to enhance our chances for immune system deficiencies, which are out of control already. And so I feel that the law is criminal at this point, keeping this resource from us to maintain health. I also get very upset every day when I open my mailbox and find all these dead trees in material <laughs> that I can't even read. Why? <laughs> when they can substitute, to, you know, uh, one acre of, of hemp will be equal to 20 acres of trees in a 20 year period. Yeah. So there's no excuse for that. And I'm glad we're making some progress, but really this prohibition needs to end now all the way simply because as long as there's a prohibition, there'll always be someone to put us down, to think that we're less than citizens and we don't have the rights that other citizens do. We're considered guilty till proven innocent in any scenario with this uh, idiot laws. And I have never seen any intelligent result that has occurred as a result of this laws, which have criminalized 25 million of us in this country. How dare you? From the 70s to now, we have arrested over 25 million of us. 5% of the world's population, 50 25 percent of the world's incarceration more than china more than russia ever did you have to do something about it if for no other reason because financially you cannot afford this nonsense haven't you noticed you cannot afford education for my kids and grandkids you cannot afford health care for me really but you can afford to throw 20 to arrest and harass 25 million of us. The other thing that's really on my mind that upsets me to no great end is to know that at least 2,000 of us are being harassed every day. Our lives are changed if we are arrested forever because our job circumstances, our study, everything comes to a squitching hold. If you have children, you live in constant fear of having your children taken away, all these terrible things. How can you possibly be a Christian or any kind of a spiritual person and think you can treat sick people this way? Don't forget that a large part of those 25 million people with criminal records are seriously ill patients, their friends, relatives, and physicians. This is a gift the Creator has given you for every need, for a house that doesn't burn easily, that uh, rejects termites and uh, mold from dampness, from clothes that I should be wearing at all time, if for no other reason to avoid catching fire as I walk by a uh, some device that is on that. Some fire started at my house when I was sleeping one time. Locally, the the drapes were can't hemp, and huh. there was a hole there to show me there was, and it was a burned hole. But they didn't catch fire and burn the rest of the house down. Wow. So it does make a difference for everything. On on the trauma circumstances, you pour some tincture on whoever just got caught, burn, bruise, whatever. You pour that stuff immediately on them, and the bruising will not continue. You will not be all bruised up if you hit it immediately. There, uh, There is no other medicine as efficient for so many things as cannabis. Every one of us who has... Uh, who has had experience to apply for the federal government's program. When I entered, there were only two men, a stockbroker, Robert Randall, who initiated the program, my mm-hmm. hero of all times. He's passed away since. Could come a victim like myself. But everyone, and then we had at least 36 that were approved that never received it. We had a, at least 18 who were receiving it by the time the close, the government closed the program when George Bush Sr. came into the scene mm-hmm. and James L. Mason of the uh, of the health department announced that they couldn't continue to help the base ace victims. That was the big thing yep. that was killing people then because they would get excited and, and high and go and infect the rest of society and on that basis they actually closed the federal program. They thought about kicking us off the program but I know I heard the news from CBS News and I knew my phone was bugged and I don't think they wanted all that publicity so that's I think what had got us grandfathered into the program yeah. in 92 but today there are still too many people everywhere suffering the Substance Control Act is a lie it was a figment of the big liar who actually couldn't stay in the presidency because it got to know, be known he was a crook we know what I'm talking about. He wanted to punish the people who stopped his war in Vietnam by taking away their favorite recreational substance, namely marijuana. And for that reason, the rest of us been, have been fine, pain ever seen. I mean, we're paying financially, morally, we're paying constitutionally. 
environmentally. There is no common sense in any part of this prohibition, and you need to end it. You need to get all this information to your president on a daily basis till he can take it to Congress and say, we will not support this anymore, and do not vote for anyone that's against marijuana, period. Make yeah. sure you keep a record of that and kick them out. Absolutely. LV Musica, <laughs> you are a saint. We love you. Uh,